My name is Pastor Kerwin Manning. I'm the head coach slash senior pastor of Pasadena Church, the church with no limits, right here in the city of Pasadena, California. I was born and raised in Toledo, Ohio. I'm a Buckeye, and um, I still support the Buckeyes um, football team, although every other sport I'm out here as a Californian now representing. But I started in Ohio, so Buckeyes, I love the Cavs when my Lakers aren't, aren't playing. 17 years ago, we were um, called to pastor this church. The pastor before me, um, Pastor Tyrone Cushman, was leaving to take another church, another assignment in the national movement. And then um, we came out and visited the area of the church and found that it would, we thought, my wife and I thought it would be a good connection for us, for our gifts and our abilities. Um, so we accepted when they asked. We came out and 17 years later we're still here in the community, still here at Pasadena Church. Our daughter, who is 17 now, she was 10 weeks old when we moved to Pasadena. So we came out here with a brand new baby. We didn't know anything about California. Um, back east, we call the West Coast the land of fruits and nuts. <laughs> but um, we came out with a new baby and, and just jumped in and started going back then. For two years after we, we got here, in 2003, we were blessed to have another daughter and her name is Morgan Danielle. Um, I named her Morgan because um, I just made a decision that I didn't want to know the sex of the child before she was born. So my wife knew, she kept it a secret, but I, I didn't know and I said I'm going to name the child Morgan either way. Um, so Morgan came out, I was like, it's a, it's a, it's a girl, hey Morgan. And um, as soon as I said her name, she, she, she turned her head and smiled at me. And that was the, the connection that we had since birth. She was a beautiful, healthy baby. No complications, nothing going on that we knew in her, in her body and, and physical um, makeup or anything like that. All the way up until um, two days before her 10th birthday. Um, and if you don't mind, I can go, I can tell you the story. Um, she passed out on the playground of her school. She was a student at Pasadena Christian School right up the street. She passed out, they called the ambulance and we ran up to the school and um, when she passed out she fell forward. Um, we went to the hospital and and the doctor started running tests and they discovered that that she had a heart a heart emergency. Something was going on with her heart but they didn't know what it was so they transferred us to the Children's Hospital in Los Angeles and it was there when we found out um, two days before her birthday that she had a condition called CPVT um, and the long name of that is catecholaminergic polymorphic ventricular tachycardia um, and basically it's a condition that's an electrical issue with the heart so there were no structural um, deformities nothing to tell you that that this condition exists other than her passing out and usually with people with this condition the first sign is is death it's really connected to I believe as we're we're starting to look into research when you hear about athletes passing out on the field and dying and nobody knowing what's happening so many times um, that's a connection to the same thing because it's very hard to detect but we found out and our daughter was living with it um, she was placed the most difficult thing at that time was the diagnosis from the doctor was to this 10 year old girl was that you can't do anything anymore. You can't run, which she was doing. You can't play basketball, she was playing. You can't play soccer, she was playing soccer. You can't dance, she loved to dance. Um, you can't do anything to, to get your heart rate up for the rest of your life. So that was just a terrible sentence. But one thing about our daughter Morgan is that she loved life and she found a way around that so she took up cooking she started cooking at home and watching YouTube videos and became a pretty good cook she took up sewing um, and she 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 took up a little dancing although she knew she couldn't do very much and she was a cheerleader at her school which she loved and her doctor gave her permission to do a few little things with cheering so that's how she was living with this condition um, from the age of 10 all the way up until 
when she passed at the age of 14. So, <clears throat> where was she when she passed? She was at home. Um, she had just got accepted to high school, Maranatha High School, and a part of their acceptance, they had a program that Friday night um, where their dance and drama teams were doing a production. And they gave all of the incoming freshmen free tickets. So she and I went to that production. Her mom, my wife Madeline, was out of town doing a women's conference in Ohio, 3,000 miles away. Her sister Madison was staying over at a friend's. So the night before she passed, we just had a daddy-daughter day. It was, in, in hindsight, it was, a, it was the biggest blessing I could ever receive because we spent the whole day together because it was her and I doing all the things she loved to do. I picked her up from school. We went to tea pumps, this tea and boba place. And they had a long line. I said, if we go, you, you standing in the line. She said, I'll do it. I'll stand in the line. So we went there. And then we, we went to um, Pie and Burger. She loved that place. We sat at the counter and had burgers and fries. And she would get aside a thousand islands for her fries to dip them in. And we sat there and laughed and talked. And then we went over to this production at, at uh, Maranatha. And as we sat there um, in the auditorium watching these kids dance and perform, we held hands. And uh, whenever they would finish performing, instead of clapping with our own hands, the two hands that we were holding, we would just clap together. And um, it was just amazing. You know, it just, it just felt perfect. Um, and I can see in her eyes, I was watching her watch them, and I knew she was saying in her heart, I'm going to be doing that one day. That's going to be me up there next year. I'm going to be a part of this school and this production. So I was getting joy just watching her watch them. And then we went to Starbucks on Colorado after that. Um, I didn't want the night to end. So I got a parking space up front and, and paid for it. And we went in and got she got hot chocolate with extra whipped cream as she always does. And she would have more whipped cream than hot chocolate and we would laugh about that. And um, once we got our order, she was ready to go. And I said, I paid for an hour on the meter. So we, and so we laughed. She's like, we ain't staying another hour. And we went home. And that was the perfect night. The next day, um, I knew that I had a light morning. So I was cleaning my garage. And my daughters were inside just doing their thing. Morgan came out to the garage about 1 o'clock. Um, and said, Dad, when are we going to leave? Because my other daughter, Madison, had a basketball game later on. So I said, well, you know, I said, you want to help me clean this garage? She said, no, I'm not helping you clean the garage. She said, I'm going to get ready. So I said, all right, you go get ready, and then I'll be ready. So I didn't think anything about it. I just kept cleaning. I figured when they were really ready to go, they would come get me. And then after a, a, a while, nobody came to get me. So I kind of just said, well, let me go get them because I don't want to be late. Um, so I went up to my daughter's room and she was laying on the floor. I thought she was asleep. She had some music playing from her phone and her little Bluetooth speaker. And I just said, you know, Morgan, okay, let's go. And she didn't respond. Um, but it didn't look like anything was wrong. But, you know, I just, you know, because we knew she had a condition, it always worried us. So I went and I shook her real hard. I knew it was hard enough that if she was asleep, it would wake her up. And she didn't respond. Her body just was motionless. And then, then, and then you know, the whole thing, your worst nightmare comes true. She, I started doing CPR on her. And um, I called 911. I yelled for my daughter, Madison. She ran in. And she started crying, and she was helping me try to take a pulse, try to, you know, and I, I just pumped and, and as long as I could till the paramedics got there, and then they took over, and we went to the hospital, but they never, they never got a, a pulse or heartbeat from her. She was already gone, and that was on Saturday, April the 8th, and what I remember just so vividly is when I was talking to 911, they said, when was the last time you talked to her when you saw her? And, and I remember looking at my watch, and it was 2.53. And I said, it's about an hour ago. But even to this day, it seemed to me like time stopped being time at 2.53 on Saturday, 
April the 8th, 2017. Um, so that's been, a, that's been our story. That's when our daughter um, went to heaven. And the, the pain, the sadness has been tremendous. Um, you, can, you couldn't imagine, but try to imagine a father having to call his wife to tell her our daughter's gone. Um, she's not breathing. Um, this mother being away and just feeling devastated and not having anybody around her. Um, a sister who's going through this in the prime of her life. So all of our lives are just totally changed forever as a result. The only reason we're saying to this day is because of our faith, because of our, our family, our community, our church community, but even the Pasadena community. Some of you may know that I'm very active in the community and so many other, not only pastors, but churches and people just that I know from the streets um, have been so gracious to us and loving to us and prayerful that it's, it's really what's fueled us up to this point. And now we're moving forward to try to make a difference. On the day that Morgan went to heaven, I remember the doctor looking at me and saying, we can't do anything else. And as I sat by my daughter's bedside with her lifeless body, I felt like a piece of my heart was gone because I really, I mean, I loved, you know, I loved my daughter. And um, said, God, a piece of my heart is gone. You've got to help me. you got to help me help my family just to get through this. And the Lord has done that. But also immediately I remember thinking while I'm sitting there, I've got to do something. We've got to do something so that other families won't have to experience what we've experienced. Um, so in my mind, while I'm grieving and in the in the the pit of despair, I'm also thinking of you know something has to change with this. Nobody knows about this condition. Nobody's alarmed that that it has a 30% morbidity rate. 30% die. Nobody knows that, that it, it affects children um, and adults and everybody around. So I decided in my heart I was going to make a difference. And then as we went along, my wife and I decided one of the best ways we could at least start is by creating a foundation in Morgan's honor, but that specifically targeted CPVT and brought awareness um, of this condition to the world. So we, we started... Um, a Peace of My Heart Foundation. We, we got the paperwork and went through the legal procedure to become an official foundation in 501c3. Um, and we have as our goal to build awareness, to help fund research, because there's very little research that could help change this. And thirdly, we want to support families that are living with CPVT. Many of them are in need of external defibrillators just to have with them um, in the case of an event. Uh, many of them need support for um, genetic testing and things like that. So we've gone down that road and now we want to, through our foundation, uh, make a difference in the lives of other families. So we've launched this foundation and we're so excited to introduce it to the community um, next Saturday. Saturday, April the 28th, it's going to be at Pasadena Christian School. That's where our daughter Morgan spent her education and she graduated from there posthumously. I accepted her degree a month after she passed, but the school has been um, a vital part in our daughter's life in education. So we thought it would be a great place to launch the foundation at Pasadena Christian School Saturday, April the 28th from 6 p.m to 8 p.m. We still have a few tickets available um, and you can go to a piece of my heart a piece of my heart www.apieceofmyheart.life not .com, not .org. It's a new assignment that they have available and we thought it would be perfect for what we want to do because we want to help save lives. A piece of my heart .life you can purchase a ticket and if you can't make it to the gala you can also make a donation of any size and amount on that on that site as well and you can sign up for us to be able to send you periodic information to help us make a difference um, in this world and we're committed to it I know I'm a pastor and I'm committed to saving lives and 
and preaching the gospel, but another part of our hearts and our passion from this day forward is saving lives through um, changing the outcomes that are connected with CPVT.